YouTube. Happy Friday. It's Friday when I'm filming this, so happy Friday or whatever day it is that you're watching this. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, in today's video, I wanted to talk with you about waiting on God for your spouse. Now, if you're not familiar with my story, um, I will put a link in the description box of how God led me to my husband and then the video of our love story and how all that came together. Please, I encourage you to go watch that just so you have a little bit more of an insight into today's video. Um, so today I wanted to share about waiting on God for your spouse. I know what the waiting season is like, believe me. And today, if you are in that waiting season, I just want this video to encourage you. Um, I'm going to just be sharing about basically what I learned in the waiting season and what God taught me in that waiting season, um, the tough stuff that I went through in that season and how I worked through that stuff. So I'm speaking purely from just my story. There's so much more that I could add to this video and so much more that you could add, I'm sure, to this video if you're in that waiting season. Um, but I'm just gonna share a couple of things today that um, I walked through in the waiting season and um, how I worked through that. Um, my next video, um, is going to be on when God says no. Um, and if you watch my, my story of my testimony, I know what it's like to get a lot of no's from God. Um, but I will say this, um, this is the one thing that I would always say to myself and the Lord would remind me of when I was in the waiting season, when I would get a no, was that even when God says no, it has his goodness written all over it. He has the very best for you. And I remember when I would get the no, I would always remind myself, if there is a no, I know there's a yes. So I'm going to keep on trusting God and keep waiting upon him and know that he will provide and that he has an incredible plan for my life and just to trust in that. I'm going to be real with you in this video, okay? The waiting on God for your spouse is not easy. And if you're in it right now, you would say, yes, amen, sister, you know. And it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's not easy um, waiting on God for your spouse. And there's so much involved within that. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I will say this, even though it's not easy, the waiting, the season of waiting on God for your spouse is full of so much beauty. Do not miss out on the beauty. I look back now on that season of waiting on God and there were times where I was frustrated, I was confused, I was lonely. But I look back on that season now and to be honest, all I can see is beauty. All I can see is God's fingerprints all over it. All I can see is the intimacy that I learned to have with God during that time. And so please, if you're in that season, be encouraged. Look at what God is doing within you right now and just trust and know that he has the very best for you. The first thing that I want to kind of dive into in talking about waiting on God for your spouse is something that people always bring up to me when um, I'm talking about my story on waiting on my husband. Um, and it's something that I dealt with and it's something that I think everyone deals with um, when waiting on God for that person. Um, and that is loneliness. You guys, loneliness is real. It is a real thing um, when you're waiting on God. Um, you know, there were days where loneliness and being lonely was so far from my mind like it just wasn't there, like um, I called myself an independent Pentecostal woman. So I was just, you know, focused on doing what God wanted me to do and all that. But I did have my days. I had days where I just felt lonely and it wasn't easy. I know it's not easy. 
I was 21 years old when I made the decision to really become serious about waiting on God for my spouse, like being intentional about it. And I never met my husband, Derek, until I was 27 years old. And so I had a few years there in between um, that was a long season of waiting on God. And the loneliness was real. There were days that I just could not understand. I couldn't understand why my best friends were around me getting married and, and why I still had to wait. And days of just wanting to meet that person, you know, the desire I had in my heart my entire life was to meet um, the one that God had for me. And I, there were days where it was just dark. And it was it was lonely whenever I'm asked you know what did you do when you had these thoughts and feelings of, of loneliness how did you you fight that and the number one thing the number one answer I would say to that is to get in the presence of God and that is honestly what I did get into his presence read his word turn some worship music on and just get into his presence and the joy and the peace and the comfort that goes beyond all understanding when you get into the presence of God is what got me through the lonely days. When I got into his presence, I was reminded of why I could trust in him. I was reminded that I was not lonely. I was reminded that he was with me and he was leading me. And that is what encouraged my soul to continue to trust in him and to keep walking that path of weighing up on him. On the days where my thoughts were just captured with being lonely, I would have to be intentional about taking captive of those thoughts and replacing them with God's word and God's promises for my life. So if you are in that season right now of loneliness, I encourage you to call out to God, get into his presence, get into his word, let him remind you of his faithfulness. Let him remind you of his promises for your life. Take captive of those thoughts and replace them with God's word and his promises over your life. And I promise you, you will come out of that feeling encouraged, a peace that goes beyond all understanding, and the comfort that only God can give you. Because I was being intentional about trusting in God, weighing up on Him, um, when I had these feelings and these days of loneliness, I would look for things that triggered it. Um, and one of those things that I knew that triggered it was honestly Hallmark movies. Um, I was a sucker for cheesy romance movies and I just loved me some Hallmark movies with my box of tissues next to me. Um, but what I realized was after I would watch these movies, I would, the next couple days, just go lower, lower, and lower down this slope. Um, and it wasn't a fun slope. It was a, a slope and a couple of days worth of having all of these lonely thoughts come up in my mind again. Um, and that is because I had such a desire within my heart to to meet that person that God had for me and to have that fairy tale romance and you know to to have that love. And so after I would watch these movies, all these feelings would come up within me being like, "Oh, my like God, why not yet? Why not yet?" And and God gets all those feelings. And so tell him that. And I would tell him this and in that time, the Lord just convicted me upon watching romance movies, on watching Hallmark movies, um, just because it wasn't helping me. And I was being intentional about seeking Him on practically helping uh, myself with, with walking through lonely thoughts and with His help walking through that and getting through that. And so that was actually one thing, one step, one practical step that I took in combating the lonely thoughts. I'm not sure what it could be for you, but that's what kind of triggered me. So I turned off the Hallmark Channel <laughs> and I, I stopped watching those movies and honestly, it helped, it really did. The thing is, I wanted my mind 
to be filled with what God was saying to me, not what Hallmark was saying to me. I wanted my mind to be filled with God's plans for my life, not what I was watching on a made up movie. And so that was just another thing that I did to sort of combat the loneliness. The next thing that God sort of brought to my attention and something that I worked through um, in the waiting season um, was preparation, was preparing myself for my husband. Um, and if you watched my other video on how God led me to my husband, I talked about a time when I would literally write out um, all the things that I wanted my husband to be and I would pray them and that's great do that I encourage you to do that but I remember one occasion where I was like okay God I have my list in front of me I was like okay God he needs to be a man of prayer he needs to be a worshiper he needs to love your word um, and I was going down through the list of what I wanted to see in him and the Lord spoke to me and told me that I needed to be all that for him. So whatever I was looking for in my future husband, he would be looking for in me. And so during that season of waiting, I began to prepare myself for my husband. And what all that came down to was me becoming who God had called me to be. Because who that person was and what God was calling me to be and who he was calling me to be was exactly what my husband would be looking for. And so the focus on my relationship with God, like our relationship is what would prepare me for my husband. And so I wanted to prepare myself to be that woman of God that I knew my husband was praying for. I wanted my husband to be this, 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 this. I had to be that for him. And the only way that I would get there is by saying, okay, God, make me into who you want me to be. I want to be who you've called me to be because I knew that is who exactly who my husband would be praying for as well. Which leads me to the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about in this season of waiting on God for your spouse. And that is this, chase after God like nothing else matters. The season of waiting on God is beautiful because it's a season where you are waiting upon God. And in that season, God will draw you close. He will speak to you. He will teach you. He is leading you. It is a season full of intimacy with God, of such closeness with Him. And that's what makes the season of waiting on God so beautiful, of being dependent upon Him, of trusting in Him and waiting on Him and being expectant on Him. My biggest advice in this season that you're in is turn your waiting into seeking. Seek God in this season. Seek after Him for all that He has for you what he wants to speak to you. Where is he leading you? So my waiting season wasn't focused on, okay, hey God, what time, when is it gonna happen? Although I still prayed that and still had those questions for him every so often. I wanted my season of waiting up on God to be a season where I was getting to know him more. And that's what happened. In my season of waiting upon God, I cried out to him, I called out to him, I drew closer to him so I could know him more and that he could make me into the person that he wanted me to be. And the more that I knew God and the more that I spent time with him, the more I chased after him, the more and more I trusted him in the waiting season. The more and more those thoughts of loneliness and those, those thoughts of when is it gonna happen, those thoughts sort of cleared away. The more I spent time in his presence was the more that I learned how to trust him and depend on him and expect from him. Because of my relationship with God, because of my relationship with Him, I learned how to trust in Him and to wait upon Him and to know that when it was time, when it was His timing for me to meet His yes, then it would happen at that time and how He had it planned. And so I learned to lean upon Him and depend on Him and trust in Him for that. I want to quickly show you something before I sign out. I'm not sure if you can see it because the lighting has changed in this video like 10 billion times because I'm right next to a window. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you something. So um, 
I wrote this actually um, in January 2017. Um, I had met Derek then in July 2017, but each year I pray over the year and ask God um, for words. And I remember that January, I was in a little season of loneliness and I, I had felt that, you know, God, like, when is it going to happen? And I remember I was at the same time asking God for my words for that year. Um, and he gave me three words and it was trust, depend, and expect. And so I wrote it down on a little chalkboard. It says 2017 up there, trust, depend, and expect. And I wrote that um, in that January and I just put it in my kitchen and it still sits in our kitchen now. Um, and what this meant for me was to trust in him for when it was gonna happen, to depend on him. So not try and, and get it on my own, not try and go and try to figure it out myself, um, and also to expect from him to expect that God was the one that would give me my husband, that would lead me to my husband. So trust and depend and expect from God today. Lastly, I just want to leave you with a scripture. And this is a scripture that I read so much and held on to in my waiting season. And it's Psalm 62 verse 5 and it says, let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. Let me read that again. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. There's other versions of that. I'm reading from the NLT version, but there's other translations of that scripture, and it says, wait on God, for my expectation is from Him. I'm expecting from Him. My The thing that I'm praying for, the thing that I'm hoping for, the thing that I'm waiting upon, I expect from Him, and I want it to come from Him. I just want to encourage you with this today. Waiting upon God is a beautiful season. In moments when you are growing weary and tired and discouraged, I just want to encourage you to get in the presence of God, to seek Him, ask Him the questions, pour out your heart to Him. He wants that from you. But get into His presence, seek after Him, and trust and know that He has the very best for you. The season of waiting is not easy at times, but it is a season full of beauty. So don't miss out on it. Anyways, that's it for me today, but stay tuned for the next video. The next video is a part of the waiting series, um, and, it's, and it's basically when God says no. What happens when God says no? Um, and so I'm going to be sharing on that in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, I hope you are encouraged by this today. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. God bless. See you guys soon.